all right what is going on everyone and welcome back to more black desert my name is john and today i wanted to do an updated video on my elixir rotation because recently as of i think about a week or two ago they updated it where uh you can get more materials for life skilling like all the traces and just uh you can actually get truffles now which is amazing which we'll talk about later but overall, I think that the gather rate for just in, across the board has been higher. And so making end game elixirs, foods and everything has just across the board been overall higher. And that has affected the market a little bit. But I wanted to talk about the elixirs that I use for both PvP, uh, PvE. And I guess we'll talk about life skilling in a little bit as well, but it's not really as much for that. So I want to show you what I used in particular and which ones I think are good for overall stuff. <clears throat> so first of all, if all of you guys have been uh, life skilling, you guys should be doing that now because at least on NA and EU, we have a event or an event going on that's giving basically all life skill XP um, buffs. So if you're trying to push for a guru uh, alchemy, now is probably the chance. I do a lot of stuff on my main, not my uh, fishing character. But if you're trying to push for Guru, now is probably a good time to do so. And yeah, so here's where I make a lot of my uh, elixirs and stuff. So let me give you the rundown as basic general rule, and then we'll talk about more specific stuff. So your goal is to be making the green ones, turning it into the blue ones, and then turning the blue ones into party elixirs. Um, so the way it works is you may be looking at it like, okay, so a blue elixir for yourself is eight minutes, but a party elixir is 15. But when you craft them, like turning the blue ones into party, uh, there's a chance to double proc. So basically like if you use the materials to take 10 party elixirs, some, and most of the time it actually gives you 20. So the value is actually a lot higher um, on average. And I've done a lot of elixir crafting to know that. So chances are you're going to be making more by turning them into parties and it's just overall good whether you're using it for PvE, uh, PvP, and so on. So yeah, over the time I've just been making a lot of elixirs and then turning them into other things. But the thing you guys probably want to see is what I actually use and a lot of this is just what I had materials to power level it. So, um... Before I start, I just want to say that usually when you use full elixirs, it obviously does cost more than using a frenzy draft or something because you're getting more stats out of full elixirs. So chances are like 99% of places you're just using a frenzy and it'll be fine. But places that you're doing group grinds, um, obviously PvP, if you try hard enough, and um, just like high-end grind spots for your solo stuff is where I would use these. So here are the elixirs that I use. Um, <clears throat> I think most of this is more for PVE, but there's a lot of stuff in between that like they just work together so you could use it for everything. So first of all, extra damage to or like special attack damage 2%. Just basically like down attacks, air attacks, and all that stuff. So special attacks that um, work together, back attacks, usually really good. So lethal destruction, these are kind of expensive, but obviously all the costs of elixirs have either gone up and they have like the uh, market cap is raised or it's easier to get the materials now. So keep that in mind. Next, we have elixir of strong shock. Um, critical hit plus three. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because sometimes, depending on what crystals you use, you can just get five of them and you won't need it. But if you are just um, using straight damage crystals, uh, chances are you're not going to be able to hit five crit without like a lot of extra bonuses. So just using the party elixir or just the regular elixir of this one is always going to be a guarantee that you hit five. Um, Griffin elixir. This is actually one that um, I would probably recommend uh, gathering yourself. It's not that bad if you just go down to the Navern Step area. And so you can get them in. I think the hardest 
thing you need is like the sap. I think it's a Thornwood sap. I don't actually remember 100%. But getting the claws is easy. It's the sap that's the bottleneck. Um, let's see. All of these are basically the same thing. Air attack, 15%. Depends where you grind, but if this is more of like a PvP one, and air attacks are more useful there, but it really depends where you grind for um, air attacks to actually be relevant, because a lot of spots doesn't really uh, matter for that one. Down attack is more important, because more spots actually can down them more than air attacks, so I think this one is actually an important one. So, Brutal Carnage, kind of an expensive one compared to uh, Merciless Sky, but they do stack, so if, if you can get them both, cool. But just know, make sure to know where you're grinding, and can you even air attack or down attack an enemy before you just start popping them randomly. Um, next one, Elixir of Steel Defense. This is almost a mandatory one for basically both of them PvP, PvE, just because not take, or taking less damage, always nice. Grim Reapers. Very expensive one to craft. I think it's it's not bad. Like, you can buy them, but it's not, like, cheap. So, recovery on hit is always an important one because that's, like, why you use a frenzy aside from the damage is to regain a lot of HP on hit, and I think it's something worth doing. Next one, we have Elixir of Strong Life. I would probably recommend buying this one because it's probably going to be cheaper than making it yourself. I guess it depends on... How much it costs on your server but just having a higher hp pool always nice to have next one we have is specifically pve our damage re received from monsters is minus 10 percent so stacking i think that stacks with the whole uh all damage reduction plus monster damage so you're just taking overall less damage a lot of these elixirs are meant for high-end spots and or group grinds so just keep that in mind like if you can Guarantee you won't die at a certain spot, then you don't really need all these defensive elixirs, but just keep that in mind. Uh, the next one is Advanced Concentration. 99% of grind spots probably won't need it, except for like the higher end ones, like Crypt of Resting Thoughts and like the Ulakita areas, which um, do actually require accuracy. But I use this more for PvP because that's uh, a little bit more relevant when you're fighting players that are built differently. So I think that's important. Next one is Sharp Detection. This one for the longest time has been a bottleneck for everyone. There's, there's a reason why it's like four mil each. And gathering truffles used to be very time consuming and expensive. Um, you weren't able to buy it off the market. I think you can actually buy it now. Let me actually just take a quick look. I'm pretty sure they just sit. <laughs> Yeah, you could just buy these and then turn it into parties or just buy the parties. So with the recent patch, they added an option where you can actually just straight up buy uh, truffle seeds and then you can get it from Simple Alchemy. So it allows you to just craft these for a lot cheaper. And I think that, yeah, it's like it's only going down in price, like I guess over time. I, it looks like it's going up, but it's going to go down. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking for sharp detections, back in the day, it used to be very uh, difficult to get. Well, not difficult, but just time consuming because they had a long respawn timing timer when you're gathering. So yeah, if you don't like gathering, just buy it. It's kind of expensive and just keep that in mind. But I think it overall, that is probably one of the most uh, recommended elixir because uh, crit damage means you clear faster, you do more damage, everything's good. Next thing we have is back attack damage, the lethal assassin. I do believe back attack is probably the most important of the three, like we saw uh, air attack and down attack. Keep in mind, they all stack, so you can use all three of them, but in every spot, like 100% of them, you can get back attacks. Not all spots can you get air attacks and down attacks. So I think lethal assassin is probably like, if you can only get one of the three, uh, back attack is the most important one in my opinion, but Recommended to get all three if you can. Elixir Flowing Wind. Um, attack speed plus three. I'm not even 100% sure you really need this because you can get five attack speed <laughs> relatively easily uh, like with foods and everything and I guess other like elixirs that you use and not elixirs but like the perfumes and everything. So optional 
and not expensive. So if you want it, just keep that in mind. Um, it's it's an option, but I don't think you'll need it. Next thing we have is uh, Brutal Death, which is defense nullifying damage on per critical hit. So, like, I believe that is just another layer of defenses and always good to have. Next over here, we have per back attack. This one is crit. This one's back attack. More layers of defense. And I know the whole meme and BDO and grinding is uh, just don't get hit. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work like that. Next thing we have is recover 5 HP per critical hit. Um, this is actually more of a, a relevant one because we talked about how, what was that other elixir? Recover three HP per hit. Now, if you crit, you have plus five, plus three. So you're actually recovering a lot. And if you know how to grind properly, uh, you're hitting like all the mobs at once. So you're like recovering stacks of like hundreds at a time. Um, so I do believe it is relevant. Plus if you're using... The Death Blow Artifact and Lightstone combo, well, just Lightstone combo, um, it should give you or get you as close to 100% crit rate as you can. Depends on the class, keep that in mind. But chances are, if you are 100% critting, plus all the hits and recovery, this is a very important one. So Draining plus Grim Reaper, worth recommending to you guys. Uh, next one, there, we use an Elixir of Endless Frenzy. Um, so basically, get big AP, you lose DP, but the AP should outweigh the DP, you just don't get hit, or if you do get hit, the recovery will make it, like, negate each other. So you're just doing more damage, it's good. And then, yeah, that's about it. So those are my recommended for PvE and PvP. Um, <clears throat> for all of you who actually use the uh continuous care for the fairy i just want to say to all of you guys that well i guess i don't have a setup for this one i only have continuous care four so that means i can only get like 16 if you have continuous care five you have 20 and very rarely do i see people use a full set of 20 because even in the highest end areas uh you probably won't need them the only time you need 20 is like full-on pvp so, a lot of people have asked me this, is continuous care worth getting? Now, the answer to that is, what do you think you need the elixirs for? Like, where are you grinding? And what are you actually doing? If you do PvP, sure, get the highest one you can. That's just the advice in general, get the highest one you can. But even for me, as someone who's at the end game, I think 16 is, like, more than enough. Like, I can use it, <clears throat> and then... If I really do need more, I'll just manual pop the other four. Is it worth spending the extra hundreds, potentially, to get the perfect one? Depends on what you do. But uh, I think for most players, you won't even need 16. Like, here's what I would stack on my continuous care. And even if I didn't use elixirs, here's what you do. You put your food on, and then you put your draft on. And then maybe a perfume if you use it, depending on your grind spot. I personally like popping my scrolls manually because I don't want it to pop the extra hour well, like this last second, but it's not really a big deal. And then so like one, two, three, three slots are used for like the 15 minutes, 20 minutes cooldown. And then the rest of these would be elixirs. So even then, like you don't really need the food because I just pop that before like I start the rotation, turn the uh, continuous care fairy thingy on and then it'll go and so the things you want are like the 15 minute timers which are like frenzies and then your perfume and then anything that goes off on like 15 minute intervals uh, is what you want to have auto popped so yeah once again if you're grinding most bots I would say 16 is more than enough if you're high end pvping Honestly, 16 is still enough, but like if you want to go for 20, just know that um, it's very expensive and most people won't need it. So just ask yourself, look at all the elixirs you use and or everything you can get and combine them, add them all up and ask yourself how many slots do you really need? 
So I think for your average player, realistically, like 8 to 12 is more than enough. 16 to 20 is more for like end game players. But once again, if you just got super lucky and you just pulled a continuous care five, it's fine. You'll use it eventually. But um, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys learned some stuff as well. I I forgot to actually talk about the life skill ones. This is going to take about like 15 seconds. All right, so um, life skill potions and elixirs I use. Okay, so if you can get the Lara's warm black tea, excellent. Chances are you can get seafood Tron, cool. You, you can get the elixir flowing time and then pop any of your daily uh, buffs for gathering and whatnot. So <coughs> yeah, that's about it. Um, Life skilling is super easy. You don't even really need continuous care. If you do, you'd probably just pop like three buttons. But aside from that, um, that's basically what I use. And that's about it. These are all just random ones that I combine into other ones later. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you're new to the channel, I would love to see you guys come back. Hit that subscribe button. And I try to upload videos for... Uh, beginners, returning players, and people who are just looking to get better at the game. So yeah, I've been playing this game for almost eight years now. And back in the day, I didn't have any guide videos to help me because I started when the game started. And I had kind of had to just figure all this out myself. So over the years, I just wanted to um, like share my information and knowledge with all of you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, drop a quick like and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.